Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Searchlight Church Online. Right where you're at in your home, why don't you stand and worship with us today. Lord, thank you so much for the privilege of worshiping together, even though we're in separate places today. God, would you receive our praise as we worship you this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's worship together. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. This is you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible. Through you, blind eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. I'm living by faith. Nothing is impossible. Father, we exalt you today, God. Worthy is your name, Jesus. God, we exalt you in this place today. Holy is your name, God. Amen.
exalt you. Worthy is your name, Jesus.
He alone, He alone is worthy. And His name is higher. And I don't know where you are this morning. You know, maybe your walk with Jesus, maybe your experience is, is kind of just tasteless. Maybe it's just worn out. Or maybe you've just never connected in a way that you hoped. And maybe you've prayed for things that have never taken place. But I'm telling you that if you keep on, our God is great. In His name, there's no other name under heaven. And the demons shake at the name of Jesus. And you might be the one this morning out there watching this broadcast that needs a touch from God. Maybe it isn't your, your brother, your sister, your neighbor, or somebody else. Maybe it's you today. A place where you're feeling down. But I want to say right now that our God is a mighty God. And he said, where two or more are gathered, that I am there in the midst of you. So let's pray right now, and I'm going to pray for you, something a little different. I'm going to pray for you that's watching right now, that needs that touch from God, that needs that answer to prayer that you've been waiting for. Father God, I just thank you, Lord Jesus, that you never leave us, you never forsake us. God, that your name is higher than any other name. God, and that you do hear us, Lord. Your ear is never deaf to us, God. You always are bent over listening to every word we say. Father, I pray right now for each one that's listening here that's waiting for that answer to prayer, that you would touch them this morning, that you would encourage them this morning, and they would sense your presence. Lord, lift them up, O oh God. Lord, lift them up this very moment, I pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks and we give you praise, for there's none like you who love us through all of it, God, the good and the bad and the ugly. In Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Walk with him and expect a miracle today. Our God is an awesome God.
Good morning, and welcome to Searchlight Church Online. We're so glad you joined us. My name's Tim, I'm one of the pastors here, and I want to wish you a happy new year. While you're watching this, if you could go ahead and fill out your online connection card, the link for that is right here in the, the description of this video, and it should pop up in the comments section as well. The uh, connection card is the best way for us to stay connected. I know it's been a couple weeks since we met, and that's also where you can let us know what's going on in your life. We can join you in prayer for anything. You want to celebrate something, let us know. It's a great way to just stay connected, even though there's a little bit of distance going on right now. If you're watching this with us for the very first time, Thank you for taking some time out of your Sunday morning and worshiping with us. If you want to let us know you're watching with the connection card, we'd love to just send a note home and say thanks for spending some time with us online, and we hope to get to know you in person once we start meeting again. So go ahead and fill out your online connection cards while I'm talking, and, uh, and we'll keep you connected to what's going on at Searchlight. Speaking of that, right now we are online only. We are week to week with what's going on with COVID. We want to make sure that we're being uh, extra safe, taking all necessary precautions, and that will be going kind of a week to week decision. So the best way to stay up to date on that is to follow us on our uh, social media accounts, subscribe on Facebook, follow us on in Instagram, as well as we send out emails every week. And if you haven't been receiving our emails, make sure you sign up on the online connection card. There's a little box to click that says, I want to receive the emails, and you'll always be in the loop. So that's the best way to know what's going on, uh, and we hope to meet again in person, but that'll be kind of a moment-to-moment -moment decision. So make sure you follow us on social, and we're going to be safe, and we're going to worship the Lord together, and we're going to have a great start to 2022. So make sure that you stay connected with us. We have a great new series coming for you, so I don't want to take any more time, but I'd like to invite you to uh, participate in giving with us, and uh, we want to say thank you so much for your generosity in 2021. Uh, I want to say thank you personally uh, for the pastor's offering. You guys were so incredibly generous, blessing all of our families, and we're so thankful for that. And so today, as we kick off 2022, we want to invite you to partner with us as we just try and reach and teach people to live and love like Jesus here in Long Branch and all over the internet, wherever this word goes. And if you'd like to do that, there's a couple ways you can participate in giving. You can uh, actually send a check or money order. We have a new P.O. Box. It's Searchlight Church, P.O. Box 338 in Long Branch, New Jersey, 07740. You can go online to our website, searchlightchurch.com, click on the Give tab and uh, give securely through PayPal. Or maybe the easiest way is to download the Tidely app and give right from your smartphone or tablet. Securely, you can set up recurring giving uh, if that's one of the new disciplines you want to start in 2022. And I just want to thank you again uh, for your faithfulness in giving and partnering with us to bring some hope into kind of a hopeless world. And uh, it's a great privilege to partner with you in that. And so let me pray for you as we move on with our service. God, thank you for today. Thank you for a new year. Thank you for a new start. Thank you for technology that connects us even when we feel a little isolated. God, I pray you will bless this temporary thing like offering, make an eternal difference in our lives. Bless this service, God. Speak to our hearts exactly what you want to give us as we give to you. God, bless us. Bless our families. Provide for every need. Keep us safe. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now give a big 2022 welcome as we welcome Pastor Chris to the stage to kick off our brand new series, Neglected Virtues. Hey, Searchlight Church, good morning and welcome to the first Sunday service of 2022. Thanks for joining us for Church Online this morning. And if I haven't met you in person, my name is Chris. I'm the lead pastor here at Searchlight Church. And it's my privilege to kick off the new year today by opening up a brand new teaching series called Neglected Virtues. Now, I'm sure that many of you are just like me. You're thinking it's the new year. It's time to... Uh, make all the things right that were wrong in 2021, right? This is the time where we assess what we're going to do different this year from last year. That means that you probably made some resolutions. Uh, some of you have probably, like me, gone and thrown out all the junk food and replaced it with lean meats and uh, veggies, right? Some of you, your gym memberships are getting dusted off. Maybe your Bible is getting dusted off as well. Uh, maybe you decided this year that you're going to go back to school and uh, change your future. And for others of us, maybe we're focusing on certain relationships that need to be repaired or strengthened. And so that's why we decided to open up the year with this series that's all about virtues. So for the next six weeks or so, we're going to focus on some of the most neglected ones in our world today. I think if you're honest in your evaluation, you'd have to agree with me that we live in a world that's lost sight of many virtues that are incredibly vital to a healthy and productive society. So I think it's fitting for a fresh start and a new year. It's a great time to explore some of these things and take the time personally and corporately to recommit ourselves to develop the, developing them, not just in our own lives, 
but in our families and our friendships. If you're a student, you can develop these uh, at school or on the job. And so I'm glad that you have decided to join us, and I hope that you'll stay with us throughout the entire journey as we cover some of these things. Right Before we jump into the content for this morning, I want to just invite you to stop for a moment. And for our first service of the new year, let's say a word of prayer together and just invite God to have his way in this service. Lord, thank you so much for uh, the privilege of being together for another year. It's hard to believe holidays are over. 2022 has begun. It's a new year for us to worship you and to serve you and most importantly, to learn how to live and love like your son, Jesus. So be with us, uh, anoint me during this message and have your way today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So if you have downloaded the digital note card that's right there next to this video, I want you to go ahead and grab that, grab your pen, and let's get started today. Your very first fill-in for 2022, and hopefully it's one that sets the tone for the next 356 days of this year. The very first one is this, to live and love like Jesus is to live a life of virtue. Right? To live in love like Jesus means to live a life of virtue. It's hard to believe that Searchlight's been in existence for 12 years now. And honestly, a lot of things have changed and evolved over the years since we started. But there's one thing that's remained constant, something that's remained the same, and it's this, our vision statement as a church. That Searchlight Church is an authentic community of people committed to living like Jesus lives and loving like Jesus loves. Basically, real people, real life, real love. If you've been around, you've heard that very uh, many times, right? And if we truly aspire to live and love like Jesus in our day-to-day lives, we need to be focused on being people of virtue because that's the example that we get from Jesus when we study his life as recorded in the Bible. Now, if we're going to be people of virtue, right, it's important that we know exactly what that means. So let's start by having a working definition of virtue. So if you go to the dictionary, you're going to find this definition, and I think it's a good starting point. The base definition of virtue is this, the quality of being morally good. The quality of being morally good. Now, for some of us watching this video today, the wheels of your brain are probably already spinning just based on the definition that I gave you, right? Because we live in a world where morality... And, uh, and something, something being considered good versus bad or right versus wrong can be really subjective, right? Depending on your culture, this can be different, right? Depending on where you grew up and the type of culture that you live in, it can be different. If you travel to different places in the world, you'll find that uh, certain things are considered morally okay <coughs> and others are wrong, right? When, how, or where you grew up can make a difference in those feelings. Also, your personal life experiences uh, will definitely have a bearing on this. And even in the church, right, even among followers of Jesus, this issue of what is good or bad can vary in different degrees. And here's where it can get really tricky, because as Christians, we're not only called to believe in what is morally good, but we're called to live a life of conformity to a standard of right. We're called to live a life uh, where we conform, right? And, and I think we can all admit that saying and believing something is morally good and conforming our lives to this belief are two distinctly different things, right? Let's explore a couple of examples for a minute. I'm sure you guys could get the point of what I'm trying to say today, right? How many of you would say that honesty is a virtue, right? That it's virtuous to be honest. Um, So I I think most of us would agree in a basic conversation that to be a morally good person is to be honest. We say things like honesty is the best policy or you can never go wrong by being an honest person. And when you're looking for that special person to spend your life with, you hope that you find somebody that is an honest person. But what happens when we go from the belief that honesty is morally good to conforming our lives to a standard of honesty, right? What happens when we do that, right? Do I have to conform to that belief when I file my taxes, right? Well, what if I don't tell my wife every detail of what went on, right? You've heard the phrase, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, right? Don't don't worry, everybody. I wasn't in Vegas last week. Nothing happened, right? But you've heard that phrase. Well, if I'm totally honest, he's going to be really hurt 
if I give this information, and that's not going to help anybody, so let's just kind of keep that closed in, right? It's, it's a virtue, right? I mean, I believe I should be honest, but to conform my life to that now is different. You've heard some people say patience is a virtue, right? You've heard that. I mean, we can probably all agree that it's morally good to be generally patient with people and, and give people an opportunity, but what about when we have to conform our lives to that? You mean when I don't feel like being patient, I have to put my feelings aside and align my life with that virtue? Like it's way different to say I believe patience is a virtue, but to actually conform or to conform my life to what I say is morally right is way tougher than to just say I believe that. And as followers of Jesus, guys, listen, we aren't called to be perfect, right? That's impossible. We're, we're not called to be sinless. That can't happen. We're not expected to get it right all of the time. But we are called to step away from the old human sinful nature and walk close to Jesus in our day in and day out, allowing him to transform our lives to be more like him. And that means we can't just say we believe in things to be good. We have to conform our lives to those things. Even as the culture goes further and further away from a biblical definition of what's morally good. And that's why it's increasingly difficult as the years progress. Why? Because we live in a culture that has neglected certain virtues. It, it's harder and harder. It continues to be difficult because we live in a culture that's neglecting those things. Now, that's not to say that most people uh, out there wouldn't say that they believe these things to be morally good, but they aren't necessarily willing to conform their lives to them, right? Uh, ask random people if they think honesty is morally good, and they're probably going to say yes, but what about conforming to that in the everyday day-to-day -day of their lives? What about integrity? They're going to say, yeah, that's good. Like, you should have integrity. It's morally good, but, but uh, what about conforming? Here's another one, kindness, right? I mean, yeah, it's good. It's, it's a morally good thing to be kind, but what about when I don't feel like being kind or when the situation is something kind of that pushes me over the edge? Charity or, or, or generosity, right? The people in general would say, yeah, it's really morally good to be generous and to show charity, but do they conform? And here's a good one, forgiveness, right? I mean, most people are going to say it's really morally good to forgive, right? And they get it. They might even be able to quote a, a scripture verse, like if you want to be forgiven, you got to forgive, right? But what happens when it seems unforgivable, right? How do I conform my life to that thing instead of just believing it? So the series is about the fact that we live in a culture that's neglecting certain virtues, and as followers of Jesus, we're called to not only believe in what the Bible teaches as virtuous, but to conform our lives to that standard. Paul said in Romans 12 too, don't conform to the patterns of the world, but be transformed, right? He said that, and how do we do that? Well, we commit our lives to not just believing, but conforming. For the rest of the message, I'd like to talk about the first of several virtues that we're going to cover in this series and, uh, and it's this, how can we be people of honor in a cancel culture? We're going to talk about honor today, in a cancel culture. How many of you would agree with me that we live in a cancel culture? Just throw up an emoji in there, a thumbs up, or raise a hand in there in the online broadcast, right? In other words, we live in an age of perpetual offense, right? You know it. It's like people are quick to judge, quick to criticize. People are quick to condemn, quick to point the finger, based on what they see or hear on the news or on the internet or even around the coffee machine at work, right? And once they've seen what they need to see, heard what they need to hear, you're canceled, right? It's cancel culture, right? I don't like that. You're done, right? I've heard enough. You're done. Oh, I've only seen a 30-second click on, tip, uh, on TikTok uh, that I don't like, but you're done, right? Here's one. I've only seen videos that Facebook keeps sending me according to their algorithms that align with the stuff that I'm predisposed to agree with. You're done. Canceled, right? We, this is what happens. We live like in a cancel culture, right? It starts with big issues, it, and they're, they're easy. World issues, world crisis, big business, politicians. We just start canceling people based on that. Right? It could be an athlete that does, does something that we don't like, canceled. Or a celebrity that we don't align with, canceled. I'm not going to watch any of the more shows or movies that they're in. I'm not going to this store. I'm not going to watch this team anymore because of this. But you, you know that it's going further than that, right? Before you know it, it could be your kid's school teacher, right? 
right? I don't like your approach, so you're done. It could be your pastor. Maybe right now you've already started canceling me because you don't like some of the things that I'm saying, right? It could be your pastor. It could be a person that you work with or an acquaintance or a friend on Facebook. You're done. And honestly, guys, it even gets worse than that. Next thing you know, it's a family member. It's somebody that you're related to, and you had an offense, and they're canceled. It's a good friend, maybe from a life group or somebody that you sat with next, uh, sat with in church like for years, and all of a sudden they're done, they're canceled. All too often, it doesn't even take a major offense, right? When we lose sight of how to honor one another, it could be as simple as what you like or you share on social media. It could be a single misstatement that somebody made, right? You could have years and years of potential, uh, of personal relationship, and you can be canceled in an instance because of an offense. You know, on Christmas Eve a couple weeks ago, it was our last service of 2021, uh, I had a friend come to church, and this person had been part of our church for quite a long time, for several years, but they left a few months ago over like some COVID issues and some political things in our nation. And, and honestly, they decided to come to church on Christmas Eve um, to be with us because the church they're attending didn't have a service. And you know, the sad thing is that person didn't even make it past the foyer on Christmas Eve before storming out because people were wearing masks and taking temperatures. And the worst thing was that they sent me a text message literally three minutes before I was going to walk up onto the stage to lead worship for Christmas Eve. A service that should be nothing but peace and love and joy and the celebration of Jesus' birth. And the text basically said how disappointed they were to be greeted by a masked brigade and temperature takers. Oh, and by the way, at the end of the message, Merry Christmas, right? Canceled. Years of friendship and co-laboring in the church didn't matter. Canceling, canceled over something I think is really silly. People's freedom to wear a mask or not and the responsibility of taking temperatures to be extra safe during the pandemic. You know, I just, I just think this is the, these are the types of things that happen because we get off of the focus of honoring one another, right? You know, it's almost like people are continually looking for ways to be offended. And I believe this, that if you're on a continuous search to be offended, you will always find what you're looking for in this world. Now, the Apostle Paul said it this way in Romans 12, 10, when he said that we should honor one another above ourselves, that you, sh you should honor others above yourself. So here's the question that you and I need to answer is this, how did I do in honoring others above myself in 2021? Was I successful in honoring people above myself? And what's going to be different in 2022? And there's one person who understood what it felt like to be not honored, and it was Jesus himself. And in Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 4, we pick up this story, and, and Jesus has been healing people, and he's been doing miracles and all this stuff, and then he comes into this interaction with people in his own hometown. Check it out, Mark chapter 6, 1 through 4. It says, Jesus left that part of the country and returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. The next Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed, and they asked him, where did, they asked, where did he get all this wisdom and power to perform such miracles? And then they scoffed. He's just a carpenter, the son of Mary and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon, and his sisters live right here among us. They were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. And then Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown <coughs> and among his relatives and his own family. You know, in the original Greek, there are a couple different words that are used when we're talking about this idea of to, to honor. The first one is this, if you're still taking notes, atimos. Atimos, and it means without honor. The basic connotation is this, to treat something or someone as common or ordinary. That's basically it. That's what it means. Now, the opposite word is uh, time, it's spelled like the word time, but it's pronounced, pronounced time to, 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 ha, to, ha, to s treat something with honor, time, right? And that means to value. It means to respect, to highly esteem, to treat as precious, weighty, or valuable. So Jesus was saying everywhere else he was treated valuable. He was highly esteemed. He was treated like he was precious, but in his hometown, among his family, he was treated as basic, common, ordinary. So with that in mind, what does it mean to honor others above ourselves with virtue? It, it, means, it means to cherish others, to esteem others, to, 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 to consider them valuable and precious 
above ourselves. And when we honor others, we build them up. When we honor others, we encourage them, and we believe the best about other people over anything that we would hear. And when we dishonor someone, it's like the exact opposite, to treat <coughs> excuse me, someone as common, right? To treat someone um, as if we wouldn't give a second thought about them if we walked down the street next to them. To, to dishonor someone is opposite of lifting them up. It's tearing them down or devaluing them or even believing the worst about them. You know, if you're if you're married, think back to when you were dating your spouse uh, and love was in the air, right? All the married people here, you get it, right? Remember how you honored him or you honored her, right? Guys, you opened the door every time you had a chance, right? You just kind of ran to do that. Compliments were flowing. Uh, you took her out. You, sh- you showed her off, you know, the whole thing. She was highly esteemed, right? Nothing but the best. What happens when you're married for a while? What happens when life gets to normal, right? How many of you have been guilty of this? You start to treat your spouse as ordinary, as common, right? Um, We take each other for granted. Maybe there's no more dates. It's more like you come home, what's for dinner? What do you mean you didn't cook? What do you mean you want to order out again, right? I mean, these are the things that we do. For some of us, we we get more excited to see the dog when we come home than the person that we're waiting to see that we're married, right? So the question is, do you want a common marriage? then treat each other as ordinary, you know, without honor? Or do you want an amazing God-honoring marriage and honor each other above yourselves? Like, you're highly valued, not common. You know, honor your spouses. You're that person. You're better than anybody else, most important to me. And it's the same way, guys, with every relationship that we have. How do we honor people? In Mark 6, uh, when the people of Nazareth saw Jesus, they treated him with dishonor, right? Isn't he just a carpenter? He's nothing special. He's an ordinary guy. Why are we supposed to follow him, right? He's got a regular mom and a regular dad. He's got brothers and sisters, right? He's no better than the rest of us. He's just a common guy that grew up here, and yet we're supposed to listen to him. And as we'll see in a few moments, the way that they dishonored Jesus actually had a negative outcome on their very lives. Now, for the rest of the message, I want to shift gears for the next few moments, and I want to talk about this. Who does the Bible say that we should honor, right? If we're talking about 2022, we want to be people that focus on these neglected virtues. We want to be people of honor, who honor others above ourselves. Who does the Bible say? Now, this is by no means an exhaustive list. I mean, it it probably is way bigger than this, but I came up with maybe seven people or people groups that the Bible says, I'm going to throw out a bunch of scripture verses to you, and uh, they're going to be up here on the screen. I would encourage you to go back during the week and read these verses for yourself if you want to kind of dig a little bit deeper, right? But as followers of Jesus who conform to what is right according to God's word, who are the people or the people groups that we should honor? And here's the first one. First and most important, we're called to honor our God called to honor God. It's where it all starts. 1 Samuel 2.30 says, but I will honor those who honor me, and I will despise those who think lightly of me. One of the ways we honor God is with what we have, with our finances, right? With our, with everything that God has blessed us with, says this uh, in Proverbs 3.9, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. That's why, that's why we believe in tithing. That's why we believe in giving God not our leftovers, right? That's not an honor. You say, like, come to my house. If you, you invite me to your house for dinner, and I show up, and my wife and I come, and we're really excited to have a night with you out to dinner, and you break out, like, seven different things that were the leftovers of what you had for, like, the, the last, like, week and a half, right? Some of it I don't even know if I can eat because it's, like, crawling a little bit, and others of it's, like, the, there's a little pizza, there's some spaghetti, here's some pierogies, oh, here's like a half of a hamburger that I didn't finish. Like, how honored would I feel? No, not at all. And yet oftentimes we bring to God like the leftovers of what we have, and we think that that honors God. God's saying, first off, you honor me with what you have, with the first fruits, with with the best. Before you carve everything else for yourself, you bring back your first fruits, right? Proverbs 3, 9, that's what it says, right? We're not only called to honor God with what we have, but actually everything that we are. Check out 1 Corinthians 6, 20. It says, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body, right? So we're called first and foremost to esteem and highly value God and to treat him as priceless with all that we have and all that we are. And you think about the ways that we honor him with what we are, how we worship, how we live our lives, right? Paul said our spiritual act of worship is to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. We just, it goes on and on and on until we're done 
living. So it's, it's what we have and it's all that we are. Number one, and everything else flows out of this one, is that we are to be people who honor God. Secondly, we're supposed to honor our parents. Exodus 20, 12 says, Honor your father and mother, and then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Now listen, guys, I want everybody to hear me when I say this. Nowhere in this definition of honor are the words agree with. Very important, right? You say, how can I honor my parents? I can't even stand their position on things, and I can't. It doesn't say agree. Nowhere in the definition of honor does it say have the same political views as your parents. Nowhere does it say you have to, in part of honoring your parents, is enjoying every single minute that you spend with them. Some of you are like, I can't even be with my mom in the car for more than a half an hour, right? That's, that's not what it means to honor. It doesn't say you have to go to the same church as your parents to honor them or even go to church, period. This is not about those things, right? It doesn't even say respect. To, truthfully, there's some difference there. It doesn't even say respect. You know, I know this can be a tough one for some people, some, even people in our church that I know. Maybe your parents didn't do such a great job. Maybe your parents abandoned you or they abused you, right? It's hard to honor them. You hear me saying, like, honor your parents. You're like, what? There's nothing about my parent that's honorable. Maybe they let you down. Maybe they were harsh or difficult or downright terrible. The truth is, guys, respect is earned, but honor is straight up given. There's a difference between respecting and honoring. Listen, respect has a lot to do with them and how they live their lives and if it's worthy of respect. But honor has everything to do with you and how you decide to treat somebody, right? Here's the third one. For all the married people, the Bible says we should honor our spouse. If you're married, this is important. 1 Peter 3, 7 says, In the same way, husbands, give honor to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. Proverbs 12, 4 says, A worthy wife is a crown for her husband. Listen, what does a crown do? When you think about, you know, to honor, what does a crown do? It's a symbol of honor for everyone to see when it's worn on somebody's head. A crown separates a common man from a prince or a king. If you think about a time when people, you know, places, I mean, I know there are still places where kings wear crowns, but like, when you think about when the Bible was written, like, there was no social media. Chances are you wouldn't know if you saw the king like face to face, there's no pictures, maybe just a drawing or a rendition. What would separate, what would let you know in the middle of a crowded city if he was a king or not? You would see a crown on somebody's head. You would see a, a group of people that were around them honoring them. Why do they put a crown on the winner of a beauty pageant, right? Because she's being set apart from every other woman in that competition, crowned with the honor of being far from ordinary. She's far from common. She is the winner and the most beautiful. All too often, marriages fall apart because we treat our spouse as ordinary and common. We're quick to believe the worst in them, slow to come alongside of them and and help them to be the best version of themselves. The Bible says that we should honor our spouse. We have to show honor. Here's the fourth one, if you're still taking notes, our elders. We're supposed to honor people that are older than us, right? Remember, to honor doesn't mean to agree with To honor doesn't mean to see the world the same way. It doesn't mean to drive the same speed as them or even have the same views on life as older people than you. But it means to set them apart. It means that people that are older than us, right, they're special, more than common, simply because they've lived longer than us and they've experienced more life. Leviticus 19.32 says this, Stand up in the presence of the elderly and show respect for the aged, right? When I was a worship leader a a long time ago at a pretty big church in North Jersey, I was like in my early 30s, about 1,000 people in the church, and I was leading worship uh, every week, and, uh, you know, very similar to how I am today, right? Love new music, uh, love to um, bring the newest... uh, newest music and bring the most fun thing to play. And, and I can remember one time, I can remember uh, my senior pastor pulling me aside as a young worship leader. And I remember him saying, you know, there's a thousand people or so out here in church. And uh, there's a percentage of the people in our church that are elderly. They're older. Um, and uh, I remember him like inc- kind of gently encouraging me, but really more like correcting me, saying, uh, you know, they deserve once in a while for you to play some of the older songs. Like, how bad is it going to hurt you to throw a little medley of some of the older songs? Or maybe just one song out of four or five that's older. Once a month, twice a month, they deserve you to, to, to do that. And why is that? Because it would honor them. Because it would let them know that, 
you know what? They're seen and they're heard and they're valued. And maybe the new songs aren't really what they want. But if we just threw one old song in once in a while, if we just do one of those hymns to let them hear that, they would feel honored. They would feel seen. They would feel like they weren't forgotten or a forgotten generation simply because they were older. The Bible says that if we want to be people of virtue, we should show honor to those who are older than us. And it's a neglected wor- uh, virtue in the world today, honoring people that are older. Number five on this list, um, and it's the one that most of us have a hard time swallowing, we should honor our authorities. Just in general, people in authority. This is a tough one because many people in authority don't deserve our respect, right? And remember, we said respect and honor are two different things. Different places in the Bible, they're The words are used and they mean the same thing, but the realities, they're different, right? Even though I consider myself to be young, you're right, like I I still think I'm kind of cut out from like an older generation when it comes to honoring authority, right? I mean, I don't know about you, but for me as a kid who grew up in the 70s and the early 80s, right, if the teacher called my parents for a meeting, I was getting a beating before the meeting and probably after, that was the generation that I grew up in. When I grew up, it was like, boy, you better hope the teacher never has to call our house. We, you're going to get punished before the meeting because if that teacher has to call us and we have to go into a meeting, we're sure you did something wrong. And it was the same thing with the police. It was the same thing with any authority in my life, um, with, t- with a preacher, right? If the pastor had to call my parents, my youth pastor had to call on me, man, I was in trouble. Nowadays, if a teacher calls home, most parents are coming to that meeting locked and loaded to let the teacher have it, right? Any teachers out there, you probably could say that I'm telling the truth, right? Today, did you, I don't know if you knew this, but ministers are like among the top five most untrusted people groups out there in the company of lawyers, politicians, and used car salesmen, right? I mean, this is, this is, this is the culture that we live in. And honestly, in a lot of cases, it's totally understandable. A lot of people in authority have abused that authority, and we've seen it with, even with the spread of social media and how easy it is to catch things on video. Like, it doesn't mean that there weren't crooked cops in the 40s and 50s and 30s. Yeah, there were, but it was a different time and place in our culture, and people just generally uh, gave that honor. But I believe that the Bible teaches that no matter what, we're supposed to honor authority in our lives. You may not have one ounce of respect for the last president, or the president that we have now. But the office deserves honor because it's a person in leadership, deserves to be prayed for. You, you, you know, and nothing makes me more angry than to hear people, well, that's not my president, or this one's my president. Well, listen, it's the office of the president, and I would tell you this, whether whichever president I wa- it was, whether I liked him or her or whoever it was, it would be an honor for me to shake the hand of a president of the United States of America. Regardless of that, there's honor there. Romans 13, uh, 7 says this, give respect and honor to those who are in authority. It's flat out in the Bible. 1 Thessalonians 5, 12, dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. So, uh, I mean, leadership takes all kinds of forms. Here's an unpopular verse uh, that you probably, maybe you haven't even really read through. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 13 to 21. For the Lord's sake, submit to all human authority. Wow, that's a big category. Submit to all human authority, whether the king as head, um, whether the king as head of state or the officials he has appointed. For the king has sent them to punish you who do wrong and honor those who do right. It's God's will that, that your honorable lives should silence those ignorant people who make foolish accusations against you. For you are free, yet you are God's slave. So don't use your freedom as an excuse to do evil. Respect everyone, love the family of believers, fear God, and respect the king. Look at verse 18. You who are slaves must submit to your masters with all respect. Do what they tell you, not only if they are kind and reasonable, but even if they were cruel. For God is pleased when conscious of his will, you patiently endure unjust treatment. Of course, you get no credit for being patient if you are beaten for doing wrong. But if you suffer for doing good and you endure it patiently, God is pleased with you. For God called you to do good, even if it means suffering, just just as Christ suffered for you. He is your example, and you must follow in his steps. All authorities, guys. It means spiritual leaders, even if you don't agree with them or like them. It means leaders at work and on the job, right? And we're not talking that you, they might not be worthy of an ounce of your respect. But if you're under their authority, we still should show honor Leaders in authority in local or national government 
We're called to honor those in authority over us, and that can be hard. Honestly, it's a neglected virtue in our society, and we need to pay attention to that. Sixth, here's one that you might not have thought of. We're called to honor our children. We're called to honor our kids. Ephesians 6, 4 says, Fathers, don't provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. Remember the meaning of honor, which we've been talking about. It's to treat as valuable, highly esteemed, not common, to see the best in them. In fact, Psalm 127, 3 says, Children are a gift from the Lord. They're a reward from Him. So let me say this. How do you honor your kids? How do you honor your children? Well, we show them affection. Right? We prioritize our children. We set them aside. Right? I hope if you have kids that they don't feel that they're just common and ordinary like every other kid on the block. I hope your children feel like they're exceptional. Like I, I want my kids to think that I think they're the most creative and most wonderful kids that have ever walked the planet, right? Even though there's lots of other creative and wonderful children out there, but my kids should feel they're the most important, right? How do we, prior, how do we, how do we honor them? We show them quality time. We give them our full attention. We speak words of affirmation over our children that uh, cheer them on, right? We discipline them with a loving hand. That's how we honor our kids. And lastly, we honor our children by teaching them the virtue of honor and how to honor other people. We do that in our home. So we're called to honor God, our parents, our spouse, elders, authorities, and our kids. And this last one, kind of reminds me of every job description that I've ever signed off on or asked somebody to sign off on that works for me. When it lists all the duties that you're expected to do, usually the last one is all other duties assigned. Anybody been there before, right? It kind of like, if you thought there was a loophole, done. Because anything I ask you to do, your job description is to do it. The last group we're called to honor as people of biblical virtue is all others above ourselves. It's the umbrella that covers everybody. Remember Romans, we read it already, but Romans 12, 9 and 10 says, you must be sincere, hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourselves in the NIV. It's how how it's written. Honor one another above yourselves. You know, during this lifetime, there will be people that you respect and people that you don't. There will be people that you naturally align with in your personality or your views and those who you would never even come close to or ever have a conversation with. There will be people who have authority over you that are amazing and kind and wonderful and generous, right? And there will be those in authority at times in your life that seek to tear you down to make themselves feel better about what they do. And if we want to live and love like Jesus, we need to honor others above ourselves. Doesn't mean we have to agree. Doesn't mean we have to get along or respect all the time. But we're called to honor others, to esteem people, to treat them better than ordinary, to treat them as children of God created in his image, even if they don't live up to it, because that's what people are. And this is a tall order and one that we all need help with every single day. And it starts with honoring God above everything else. It starts with honoring him. As I bring this message to an end, you you might remember earlier that I said that we would come back to Mark 6 where Jesus was shown dishonor in his own hometown. I think it's important for for us to know that when we don't honor God, several things happen in our lives. And this is your last major point. When we dishonor God, his, number one, his heart is broken. The Bible's clear that it's possible for us to break the heart of God. In Matthew 15, 8, Jesus said this, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Jesus was talking about religious leaders who claimed to honor God, but their hearts were far away from him, right? They did stuff that seemed right on the outside, but in their hearts they didn't show God the honor that he deserved. In other places, the Bible actually says that we can grieve the heart of God. When we dishonor God, we can break his heart. We can grieve his spirit, that it breaks his heart when we don't give him honor. But also, guys, and this is... The, the last point on your fill-in, when we dishonor God, his hands are tied. Do you know that you can actually tie the hands of God? Say, isn't God, if God's God, he can do whatever he wants. But there's things that he set in motion in the world that we can tie his hands. Go back to Mark 6. Remember, Jesus was, said that a prophet has no honor in his hometown. Look what it says in the last few verses. It says, then Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his relatives and his own family. And because of their unbelief, 
He couldn't do any miracles among them except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. I want to invite you right now in your home as you're watching this to just bow your head, close your eyes with me for a moment, and I want to ask you this. What if there are things that God wants to do in your life, but his hands are tied because you won't show him honor? I mean, what are their thing? What maybe there's things that ways that God wanted to bless you, prayers that He wanted to answer, things that He wanted to like download into your life, but you're too busy honoring other things and not honoring God. Maybe 2022 is the year to start off focusing on this first neglected virtue to be a person of honor in a cancel culture. To be that person that's not so quick to cancel somebody just because you disagree, right? Because there's probably a lot of other layers underneath that statement. And that person is worth knowing and worth having relationship with, even if they're way on the opposite end of the spectrum, right? It starts with the decision to honor God above everything else. And out of that flows honor. When you honor God, out of that flows honor for your parents, for your spouse, for those that are older than you, for the authorities in your life, whether they deserve respect or not, out of honoring God flows that. For your kids, you want to be a better parent in 2022? You want to take care of your kids better, your family, your spouse? Start with honoring God above everything else with what you have and what you do and honor all others above yourself. With your head bowed and your eyes closed right now, I just want to Uh, Just kind of start off 2022 with a prayer for you. If you're here and you're watching this message and you feel like, yeah, this is an issue, I can acknowledge that honor is um, a neglected virtue. It's something that our world is just losing sight of. And even as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, maybe you've lost sight of some of that. Maybe this last year, between, you know, the two years between COVID and politics and all this other stuff, maybe it's just... It's been a season of allowing yourself to go down some rabbit trails that really aren't honoring to God. They're definitely not honoring other people above yourselves. Maybe your opinion and your feelings and some of those views aren't even worth people knowing. It doesn't matter. You want to honor other people above yourselves. God knows where you're at, and he, and he sees your heart. And so if that's you and you just want to be honest right now and say that I, I need to focus in 2022 on honor and being a person of honor, would you just like slip up a hand, leave us a, a, you know, in, in the comments, leave a comment, let us know that you need prayer. I want to pray for you because I think that there's no better way for us to kick off a brand new calendar year than focusing on being people of honor. Like that, that the world would see something different about us because we're Christ followers, that we, we look different than everybody else. We look a little bit more like Jesus in the way that we honor people, in the way that we put other people above ourselves on the day to day. So if that's you, just let me know. I'm going to say a prayer for us and, and, uh, and wrap up, but I'll just believe that God's going to do some awesome things in 2022 as we dig in to some of these neglected virtues that come from his word. Lord, thank you so much for your word and for the realities of some of these things are not easy to swallow. For some of us, they're broken relationships and hurts in these different areas, but right now, God, we acknowledge that you're speaking to us about honor, and it's important that we do that that it's different than respect. Uh, Somebody may not have earned our respect, but we're called to honor others above ourselves. That God, you're the one that balances the scales. You see that stuff and you'll take care of it in the end. And the most important thing is that we worry about our relationship with you, God, and not allow any dishonorable behavior to break our relationship with you. And so Lord, for everybody that raised a hand, let me know that they, they have an issue with this. I just pray for strength, and courage to do what your word says and be transformed, not conform to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds that we can live this life of worship and, and sacrifice before you. Let 2022 be an awesome year, way better than last year, God, that we would be people of virtue as we move forward into what you have. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Guys, God bless you. Welcome to 2022. Have a great week, and we'll see you next week for part two of Neglected Virtues. Have a great week, guys. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. What a great message. What a great way to kick off 2022. I hope that all of us will spend a little bit of time on some of the things we've been neglecting and think about how we can honor those in our lives. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. We hope you can join us next week. Make sure you follow us on social media so you can know if we're meeting in person or online only. Again, that's really important. And go out and honor some people today with your lives. God bless you.